Dave Atkinson. I am the CEO of Squarespace. What is Squarespace? How would you define it? Uh, Squarespace is a paper of the web. It's a method by which you can create websites, uh, manage them, post them, all in one solution. That ranges from $8 to $50 a month. Up until about two years ago, we had done almost no marketing whatsoever. And all of our growth was organic. Still, even today, more than half our growth is organic. People who just like the tool and pass it on are friends, so to speak. Yeah, and that's how I was introduced. That's changing. I mean, between not just the contest, but all of our other initiatives are accelerate our growth and bring us up to a broader audience. Well, we envisioned it originally as uh, a thank you to our podcast listeners. We advertise on a number of podcasts, and um, we've grown so much over the that we really just wanted to say thank you and we thought it would be fun to do a giveaway. Um, we settled on giving out 30 iPhones in 30 days and because we all use Twitter and love Twitter, we thought Twitter would be a great space to launch the contest and run it and allow people to sort of get involved. Um, the rules were that you didn't need to tweet anything specific, you didn't have to say anything about Squarespace, uh, we just required that you included a hashtag in your tweet, and that would enter you in the day for that day's giveaway. And that's sort of how we started, and um, as you saw, it quickly blew up, and we immediately on day one made trending topics, which was something we had hoped for. For a while, tell us a bit about the trending topic, and then the ultimate uh, demise of that trending topic. Oh, well, we were stunned. Um, you know, we had a uh, hope putting together that the, the contest simple, maybe we'll hit a trending topic and that would help get us visibility and to be the number one trending topic against everything else for uh, almost immediately. And then day after day, we were uh, thrilled and shocked. And when we were able to find other sites and look at the API feed itself and see the gap that we had between the next hashtags, it was monstrous. We were four or five X, the hashtag below us. Uh, and then on the fourth day, all of a sudden we weren't in the trending topic around like 2 a.m. I think. It just stopped. Stop. We went to the API feed, we went to the other sites, and we were still in the one trend topic, but Twitter editorialized us out. Yeah. Which yeah. makes sense, you know. We we shouldn't be there. The fact that we spent six thousand dollars and became the number one trending topic is disproportionate devalues Twitter in a way that, you know, we were even uncomfortable with. Sure. We, were, we got uncomfortable about twenty four hours after we were the number one topic. We're like, huh? Oh, Wait a minute, it's a lot of hashtags. What does this mean for us? Yeah, it'd be interesting to, it would be interesting to run the numbers to figure out what the media value might have been. What was the overall increase in traffic? Uh, let's just say from, I could say the height of the campaign, but that really wouldn't, it was a 30 day campaign. Yep. So starting, let's say with you know, day one, um, you know, what kind of increases did you see? We're actually grinding statistics now, so we should have some nice charts soon to okay. show the, the real impact. Um, it, it is, you know, obviously a curve. We saw the biggest bump while we were the trending topic. Sure. Um, and I think in that time frame, it was almost 60% increase to our overall traffic to our front site. Okay. From a Twitter follower standpoint, it was. Yeah, we went from 815 followers to 37,730. <laughs> many of those have actually stayed on with you now? We only lost about 2,000 followers after we ended the contest. So we've been lucky that a lot of people have stuck around. That's great. So yeah. it's, it's a, so not only have you, uh, not only did you use it as a means to create awareness for the company, uh, engage uh, potentially new customers and a new audience, but now you, now you have a brand new channel of, you know, you basically have a house guest, except it's, it's, your your your, um, your your direct mail is limited to 140 characters, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and they can then subscribe at any time. Sure. But you essentially have a house list now that you built through Twitter. Right, we we have a, a huge boost to our Twitter audience, and it's now an issue for us to figure out how we you know intelligently utilize that. So traffic 60 percent. What about trial? What about trials? Um, did you see? Uh, an increase in trials, or were the percentages about the same? Uh, no, we saw an increase in trials, but not the same factor. So I think during the first few days, the trials went up about 20%. Um, so the ratio of uh, landing to trial was well lower than we see across anything else, but we did see actual more trial counts. And our system is 
universally good at converting trials and paying customers. So we're pretty comfortable that we'll see an ROI that exceeds our investment, as well as the synergistic values that we've got from it. Sure. So the Twitter people are a better audience than you find some other ad sources. Hmm. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. So the quality, the quality of the traffic, the quality of the uh, of the visitors but is better than what you might find in other. It's not. It's not as good as you know targeted advertising, but it's still better than uh, what you'd find on you know a lot of random positions. Have you seen a lift in sustained traffic post campaign, or it has it has no, pretty much leveled off to pre campaign to levels? I mean, our, our traffic is thankfully pretty sizable, so uh, it, we aren't really able to measure the fluctuation. Let's say. Uh, I think that we have a lot more referrers generally from Twitter just because we have a bigger uh, following audience, but it hasn't sustained. We're not seeing you know, continuous uh, increases to our traffic in post contest. Sure. What was the, the most surprising result, insight, or anything that had come from running this campaign, other than the fact that you had to work ridiculously hard for the first three to five days to keep <laughs> up with it? Other than that, what was the most surprising thing to you? And uh, and would you do would you do this or something like it again? I know you mentioned you say no more promotions for us, but the reality is that you have to feed the beast, and this is a very cost effective way to feed the beast. So let's start with the first question. What was the most su surprising thing to, to either of you? I mean, I think it was it was full surprises. We were shocked to become number one trending. We were shocked to be taken out of trending. We were shocked to see twenty thousand tweets an hour. I mean, all those things were uh, were unknown data points to us. The volume that Twitter actually commands, the, the, the fact that they can have, I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tweets with the hashtag in it. And that's, I mean, talking about making something viral, that we've never seen anything like that in our own experience. So that was pretty shocking. I think from a positioning standpoint, the biggest concern we had was, we initially started this as just a campaign to give away some iPhones. And it's not uh, doing this again and whatnot. One of our concerns is we aren't that sort of a company. We are the company that just invisibly powers things. So going on there and being like, oh, hey, this isn't really our DNA. And filling up Twitter with the Squarespace hashtag and all that stuff was, we we're almost at a point, we actually even pulled the contest shorter because we're like, this is really getting crazy. Just tweet once, stop tweeting every day. Yeah. We didn't have any intention of this becoming this big. Um, that was a little bit of an adjustment for us, I guess. Or your surprises. I mean, again, I like Dane. I was surprised at almost every, you know, different aspect of it. Um, I was definitely surprised at how easy it was to get so many people so excited about a giveaway. Um, well, the iPhone, you, you picked, the, in my opinion, you can do a giveaway. Anybody can do a giveaway. But understanding your target audience and what is of value to them is key, and you did that. The iPhone is a very powerful motivator oh, yeah. to people. Yeah. Absolutely. Days. I would have loved to have gotten one. Yeah. It's, it's great. I do think that the contest parameters have changed. Like we see a number of other contests that are doing the same kind of modeling and, and are obviously seeing success as well. If we were to do something, I think we would look for another inspired idea. I think mean, we want to change the game. Because mm -hmm. it's now it's now a very clear marketing. You know? When we did it, we felt like it wasn't as much marketing, it was actually a different intent. It was kind of cool. And now when people are constantly doing these contests, it's like, oh, yeah, another contest. Great. Thank you, Bill.